Hey guys, welcome back to another reaction video. And today I'll be reacting to 11 differences between life in Russia and the USA. Do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button if you aren't already subscribed and wanna see more videos from me. Let's get straight into it. Hello guys, welcome to my channel. As you know, I moved to the States almost eight months ago and I haven't been home since January. And now it's August and it's the first time I came to Russia this year. And definitely every day I'm noticing differences in American and Russian lifestyle that are striking me and that are surprising me because I haven't noticed them before. And this is the video about those differences. So if you're interested in knowing them, please continue watching. First difference. I noticed it when I came uh, to do my grocery shopping two days ago. So I went into the store and I wanted to buy some milk. And then I realized that in Russia, milk is stored outside of the fridge. So there are some kinds of milk that are stored in the fridge, but normally milk would be sold um, at room temperature, standing outside of the fridge. And in America, I've never ever seen that. How long can milk stay fresh being at room temperature? And I wonder if they consume it at room temperature as well. So in America, all kinds of milk, like almond milk, soy milk, and normal dairy milk will be stored in a fridge. I was really surprised. The second surprise in the store, I was buying bananas for my office and I got like two, uh, five bananas and I went to the cashier and she says, have you weighed your bananas? Um, and I realized I haven't done that. And in Russia, you have to weigh everything yourself. So you need to find scales uh, in the shop and then go and weigh and put the sticker on your banana saying that this is for example like 2LB and then they're gonna check that at the cashier as well. And yeah, this is how it works in Russia. In America, I've never ever had to weigh anything myself in a shop. You just go and you just give everything to the lady um, in the store and she would handle that for you. That seems pretty standard here in the US. I have noticed, uh, I can't remember if it was Walmart or Kroger. Um, one of them has a scale in the store where you can go ahead and put the sticker on there while you're shopping for your produce, which might help when you're at the checkout stand. Um, but either way you would still be weighing it, but it's more typical here in the U S that they just do it at the register. Or if you do what's even more common now with the self checkout, um, you just do it at the register. Difference number three. Everything is included in price already. So in Russia, tax is already included and there won't be any surprises when you come to the cashier and uh, realize that your purchase actually costs 10% uh, more than it's stated on the price tag. So everything is included and yeah, it makes, makes life easier. You don't have to calculate. But on the other hand, in America, I'm already used to paying like extra tax at the cashier when I pay. Difference number four. I know. I don't know what the tax rate is everywhere else in the uh, the country. Um, here in the Houston area, it's eight and a quarter. So basically for every hundred dollars you spend, you would add an extra eight dollars and 25 cents. Um, or for every dollar you spend, you'd add an extra eight, uh, 8.25 cents. So eight cents, nine cents rounded up. Um, I've gotten pretty used to doing that math in my head. Uh, but I could certainly understand if you're not from the U.S. or you're not from my area, how that could get confusing. But I generally, you know, if I'm traveling, I would just always assume that give yourself a 10% clearance, right? So whatever, if you're, if, if you think you got a hundred dollars worth of stuff, you actually probably are going to spend somewhere between a hundred and a hundred and ten dollars, um, on whatever that is. So just a rule of thumb. It's kind of, you know, different for every single person, but for me, it's really important to drink kombucha every like two days. I love the taste and I love how it works in my body. I really feel the action of probiotics, especially when I go to McDonald's first and then get some kombucha. I really feel that my body is getting better at digesting food. In Russia, it's so hard to get kombucha, but I managed to do it. I found just, I think there is one shop selling kombucha in all of St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg is like, six million people city but i found kombucha i got it i'm so happy it's back in the fridge so yeah but you cannot just get it just walking outside like in california any cbs store any walgreens store that you visit like in san francisco you can get kombucha i think it's pretty readily available here in, in houston as well we have tons of different options when it comes to grocery stores or, or fast food i'm sorry fast food uh convenience stores however I've tried kombucha like two or three different times and every time I just, 
I didn't find it uh, tasteful, tasty or appetizing whatsoever. Maybe I'm drinking the wrong ones. Um, so if you're watching this and you consume kombucha on a regular basis and you know some that actually taste good, that don't taste horrible, uh, tell me in the comments and maybe I can do a, go check some of those out because, yeah, so far I've never found one that I, I liked. I think they all have just like these odd gross tastes. Difference number five, um, it's bad and good at the same time. In Russia, there are a lot of homeless animals, which is really bad, and uh, they have to stay outside in winter, and all of the shelters are overbooked. But at the same time, because I love cats, and I cannot really see them in America because they're all at home, there are no homeless cats. In Russia, there are lots of homeless cats who are really friendly, and I love communicating with them when I'm outside and like giving them some food, and um, I always have, um, some cat food in my car so I can drive around and if I see a cat I would always stop and like pet it and give it some food um, and if you're from a country where you have a lot of homeless animals please guys buy some cat food buy some dog food and feed them uh, because they really need a, need our help and if you know any shelters like every time when I come to Russia I try to find hosts for a pet that I find outside on my street. So I use my Instagram because I have some followers and I ask people, maybe somebody is looking for a cat. Don't buy an animal, just get it from a shelter or get it from the outside. There are so many uh, cute pets who want to be at home. Difference number six, I really like St. Petersburg time zone because my business, uh, Linguature.com, would deal with study abroad, we send students all over the world to learn languages. And we have some students who go to China, which means that in the morning in Russia, I'm able to communicate with Chinese schools because they're still up. And then during the day, I'm able to communicate with European partners. And then in the evening, I'm still at the office, but New York wakes up and then uh, finally California wakes up. So this time zone is GMT minus, oh, GMT plus three. Amazing for doing an international business. Number seven. Oh my God, guys. This is so frustrating here in Russia. So I arrived at the airport, which is an international airport in St. Petersburg. I walk in. So I wasn't sure for a minute there. I was like, is she talking about St. Petersburg, Russia? Or is she talking about St. Petersburg, Florida? So it sounds like she's talking about St. Petersburg, Russia. To the restroom. The first sign that I see in the restroom, please do not smoke. But the second thing that I've noticed, uh, that I noticed is that it's full of smoke. Like I cannot even see the cabins because there is like smoke flying around and I feel the smell of cigarettes um, and the cigarette ban came to Russia maybe like four years ago so people are still smoking like everywhere and every restaurant would have this sign please do not smoke and everybody would smoke even like in female restrooms I'm so surprised like girls don't care about their health they don't care about their uh, future children's health they don't care about anybody's health they just smoke in the restroom this is so frustrating I hate it hate it hate it and I'm really happy that in America you cannot just go and smoke in a you know in a shopping center in a restroom because uh, momentarily the alarm will go down will go live the alarm yeah uh, you will hear the alarm and police will come and grab you and I think uh so she said they just put this into effect four years ago in Russia. It it takes a long time for this to have long lasting effects of people smoking less or not smoking at all. I can remember as a kid here in uh, the area I grew up in, um, having smoking sections in restaurants. Um, and it wasn't till here locally that it was banned probably about 10 to 15 years ago. Um, bars and nightclubs i remember you could smoke in them and and then you would i don't smoke but when i would leave there i would reek like cigarettes my eyes would burn my hair stunk like smoke my clothes smelled like smoke um i could get in my car the next morning after having gone to a bar and just the trip from driving from the bar to my house my entire car would smell like smoke because i smelled like smoke uh so I, I am glad that they have been, ba been banning it everywhere. I'm glad that there's fewer places where you can smoke in public. Um, so I can completely relate to what she's saying here about, you know, people smoking in the restrooms. But here in the U.S., if you're smoking in a non-smoking area, that'll get shut down pretty quick. Give you a fine. So I'm really against it, and I hope uh, that Russia is going to improve soon because the smoke um, just... You know, the smell of cigarettes really frustrates me. Yep. Thing number eight, uh, you will be surprised, but when you come to a restaurant in Russia, you won't be offered any free water. Every water that you get offered, you need to pay for it. And 
I've seen this test where the girls in Florida, they try to test the pH levels in different kinds of water. And um, I remember that such brands that we see everywhere like Bon Aqua and um, some other brands that are sold in McDonald's and restaurants here in Russia, they have the worst level of pH, which is really unhealthy. And if you compare it to tap water from San Francisco, for example, San Francisco tap water will be way better. And in Russia, so they offer this water and you have to pay like depending on the place you can pay up to like even ten dollars per bottle of water and you cannot get any water for free they will be like really for free we don't do that um the reason here is because yes you cannot give people tap water and this is like the difference number nine never ever drink tap water in russia and this is difference number nine don't drink tap water in russia uh only if you're 100 percent sure that the apartment or the building you're in has Did she repeat that or something hang on never ever drink tap water in russia and this is difference number nine don't drink tap water in russia uh only if you're 100 percent sure that the apartment or the building you're in has good filters so as far as the free water at restaurants and stuff um i appreciate that we can get it for free but I also find it kind of annoying sometimes when as soon as you sit down and, you know, you got a group of five or six people and they bring out like six waters um, and then the whole table's got all these extra waters. And for me personally, most of the time, I'm not going to drink it. I'm going to order a drink, a, a tea or a soda or something else. And then throughout the entirety of the meal, unless you specifically say, hey, take this water out of here. It's in my way. You got all these glasses of water just sitting there, uh, not to mention that all those glasses have to be then washed and whatever. So I think it would be better if they would just say, Hey, um, would anybody like a water and only bring the waters to the people who want them versus having all these tons of glasses on the table. Maybe that's just me. Tell me what you think. Because, um, well, I wouldn't ever risk it because we've done like this thing at school where we um, got some tap water, we put it on our table and then in the morning we had to check what happened. And um, in the morning we saw that there is like slight um, sand in the bottom of the glass, like some residual, I don't know what was that, but yeah, I wouldn't drink tap water, I never do that, I always buy my water, and if I drink tap water, I filter it first, and then I boil it, and only then I drink it, so be careful. Um, yeah, so, and remember, you won't be offered free water in a restaurant, you would always have to pay, um, but good thing is, um, if you have dollars, if you receive your salary in dollars, coming to Russia is super cheap. Like the exchange rate right now, you get 60 rubles per dollar and 60 rubles is the average price of maybe like a, two cheeseburgers in McDonald's, maybe like one cheeseburger, but you'll be able to have a proper meal for a dollar. Well, not, it's not a proper meal, unhealthy meal for, for a dollar. <laughs> yeah, so. Thing number 10, shoe covers. Anywhere you go in Russia, hospital, museum, beauty salon, anything. They would ask you to wear shoe covers. They have this weird plastic blue covers on your shoes. And in America, I only wore them once. And it was um, during the uh, open house in San Jose and the house cost like $2 million. And they had some particular kind of floors that they didn't really want to damage. But here, anywhere you go, they ask you to wear those shoe covers. Maybe because it's uh, dirty outside and you're bringing dirt from the outside to like a hospital. But then I know it also gets dirty in winter in Boston, for example, and they wouldn't ask you to wear shoe covers. But by the way, if this happens in your country, if they ask you to wear shoe covers everywhere, please comment down below. It's very interesting because I, I haven't seen really any other country um, other than Russia asking you to wear shoe covers everywhere you go. What she mentioned about the open house, I could certainly see it there. I know that sometimes when um, companies might do delivery of like furniture, and they're coming in and out of your house, they might have their employees wear shoe covers so that they don't damage your floors. It's kind of more of a courtesy thing and probably a you know to cover themselves so that they don't damage anything and get uh, any liability. Uh, the other time you might see it more commonly here is probably medical facilities, but not as, like I probably wouldn't have to put shoe covers on, but the doctors and stuff are probably wearing them, um, going in, in and out of the different hospital uh, rooms or, or uh, doctor's offices. Um, the only time I can ever remember having put shoe covers on like ever, uh, was a couple of months ago. Um, one of my friends owns a compounding pharmacy here in Houston and I went and shot video to help create a promo video for them. And I went to the, uh, the all clean room. I don't remember what it's called, but you have to do like a full scrub, like a full outfit, shoes, everything, like everything's basically got to be covered. Um, because it's the clean room. 
Um, but that's, you know, the average person isn't going into a room like that here. So, all right, let's keep going. We got, I think, what, one more to go? And difference number 11 comprises several differences in how people drive cars here. Uh. So again, in California, it's all pretty much relaxed if you compare it to St. Petersburg, because in California, everybody's kind of polite. So if you're exiting uh, a parking lot, people will let you out on the road. In Russia, you will have to wait in line until everybody passes because everybody's in a hurry. St. Petersburg is a big city. Everybody wants to get home earlier or get to work earlier and um, get to work on time. Uh, and uh, yeah, and everybody's really aggressive. So if you have like, uh, if you're driving at a slower pace and if you have some uh, space between the car that goes in front of you, like 100% somebody is gonna squeeze in and try to surpass you. Also, you cannot turn right on red in Russia. Uh, and I keep telling myself when I'm approaching the red light, I'm like, Please, Marina, stop. You cannot turn right. You have to remember that. <laughs> and another thing, there are loads of old cars. So I'm surprised that she said it was, it was pretty lax to driving in California because I've heard it's it's the opposite. And I can say the same about my city because um, Houston's very much a car-driven uh, form of transportation. And yeah, there's going to be some polite drivers and people are going to let you over and stuff, but it's also very fast-paced. And so people are definitely always driving around fast and um if you're in the left lane and you're not moving fast people are definitely going to let you know or they're going to go around you and cut you off uh i'm not saying everybody's here as crazy drivers but they're not necessarily laxed drivers either i think people typically want to get where they need need to be and uh they don't want somebody else slowing them down but again that's that's speaking in general it's not going to cover every single person cars uh, on the streets in St. Petersburg and sometimes you hear this smell of a really <laughs> old car and I hope we're gonna have smoke checks sometime coming soon when they won't be able to uh, let your car out unless it's checked for um, smog levels uh, because yeah it's it's like uh, getting this smell from cigarettes I don't I don't really like it I agree with her on that I hate when I get stuck in traffic and there's some pollutant car that's just obviously it's not even passing the emissions and shouldn't even be on the road and you're stuck behind them in a smog fest. And even if you've got all your windows up in your vehicle, eventually it gets into your AC and, and it's in your car. It's nasty. So yeah, these are my 11 differences between American and Russian lifestyle. Please let me know in the comments below what else you've noticed or maybe like what you think is different. Ask me any question, I'll be happy to answer it. If you're traveling to Russia, oh my God, give us the date. Um, it's, I'm so excited that people are coming to Russia like from foreign countries and learning about my culture. Um, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet and like this video. This would mean that uh, if you like it, this means I will know that you watched it till this moment. Like she said, do all the things like comment, subscribe and share. Uh, if you want to see her channel, the video will be linked in the description below. Uh, so you can go check out her channel and more videos from her. Um, and yeah, if you've lived in two different countries, whether it's the U.S. and Russia or U.S. and anywhere else or your country and some other country and you have some differences, uh, feel free to comment below with those. And if you have suggestions on other videos like this that you'd like to see me react to, tell me that in the comments as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Later.